So we have this, this dot product operation on Rn, on vectors in Rn, and we want to determine, so given vectors v1 through vk uh, being an orthonormal set, so that just means um, for any index i, we have, oh, sorry, vi dot vi is equal to 1. And for any two indices i, j, where i is not equal to j, we have vi dot vj is equal to 0. A good example of these are the collection of standard basis vectors in Rn. But obviously there are a lot more. So we're given an orthonormal set of vectors in Rn. We want to prove that given any set of scalars t1 through tk, or real numbers scalars here, we want to show that the norm of this vector, t1 times the vector v1 plus you know, t1 times vector v2 dot 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 plus tk times the vector vk is equal to actually the sum of the squares of all the scalars. So we want to prove this fact. So recall that given any vector, say w in Rn, that the norm of this is just the same thing as the square root of the dot product of it with itself. And we're going to exploit this fact here. So in particular, we want to consider this vector. And so we take, we have our extended equal sign here. And um, so we don't make the notation confusing. We'll add the square root at the end. But all the operations are still the same. So this dot with itself, so t1 v1 dot 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 plus tk vk t1 v1 plus dot 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 plus tk vk well we have to use the operations or the properties that the dot product uh, satisfies namely that we can multiply across a uh, sum of vectors and how scalar multiplication we pulled out of dot products. So, well, we just evaluate this. What is this going to be? So, we first see that it's, say, t1 squared v1 dot v1 plus t1 t2 v1 dot v2, and so on. t1 tk v1, vk. And then, uh, let's get some extra room here. So, coming up here, the next line would just be t1, t2, v1 dot v2, plus t2 squared v2 dot v2 plus dot 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 t2 tk v2 dot vk. And you know we can keep carrying out this calculation or we could just be a little clever and look at seeing what we're doing. So if you look at the first line here, this is 1 because it's an orthonormal set of vectors. And likewise, since the indices here are different and the rest of them, these are all equal to zero. So this whole sum here is equal to zero. Likewise, for the second line, this is zero. This is going to be one. And then this is going to be zero. Likewise, for every other vector where the indices are different. And if you calculate this down for every other pair of vectors, we're going to see a bunch of terms of the form t i t j times v i dot v j where we assume here that i and j are different indices, well, that's going to go to zero because it's orthonormal. And likewise, we're going to get a lot of terms of the form ti squared, vi dot vi. Well, this is just going to be equal to ti squared because this is equal to 1. So when the dust settles in this calculation, 
we see that the only non-zero terms left in the whole, pro the whole dot product are just going to be the sum of ti squared vi dot vi, where i goes from 1 to k. But since we're orthonormal, this is, v, this is equal to 1. So the sum just becomes ti, sum of all the ti squared. And then recall that we, we have to put in the square root at the end, or else we'd be lying. So taking the square root, and then we see at the end that t1 v1 plus dot 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 tk vk is in fact equal to the square root of ti k ti squared. And we're done.